Okay, as promised, on the phone with us, Rick DeJesus from Adelitas Way. Rick, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, it's good. It's good to be here. Now, first question I have for you is, where did you come up with the name Adelitas Way, and what does it mean? Uh, you know, we, I came up with that in about, uh, you know, 2000 and 2004, 2000 and, you know, uh, you know, 2004 was the year, 2003, 2004. I took a trip over to Tijuana, Mexico uh, by accident. You know, I thought I was going to a San Diego beach. One of my friends was kind of a knucklehead. We were kids. We were 19 years old. <laughs> and uh, we ended up getting arrested in Tijuana. Uh, you know, after we got arrested, uh, I pretty much hid money in my boot, 25 bucks. I, you know, we were shaken up because we didn't want to go to uh, Tijuana jail. So I went over to, uh, we went to this bar called Adelita's, and when we got in there, it was a brothel. Uh, and and we, we were kind of looking around, and when I was in the brothel, I met a girl there who was my age. She was a kid, and, you know, she was a prostitute. But I started talking to her and, and just kind of, you know, sharing life stories. And, you know, the whole thing was, was kind of eye-opening to me because over here, you know, in the United States, we're very blessed. Uh, when life gets hard, you tend to feel bad for yourself. Uh, you know, at that time, I was in a struggle. You know, the band, I don't want to say struggle and band because we were still so new. You know, I was i was in that phase where I was making a demo and handing out demos to everyone and kind of, you know, living wherever I could, you know, sleeping on my friend's floors, you know, sleeping in my car. And you tend to feel bad for yourself. And after that trip to Tijuana, Mexico, uh, you, you know, it really opened my eyes that, you, you know, there are people out there that can't even drink clean water and I met this girl who was my age and you know she was telling me about her life and it was a very difficult life and it was eye-opening to me uh you know she was a prostitute and she was a little kid and she pretty much gave all her money to her family and it just that conversation with her really when I went back to the United States I had a completely different mentality I can imagine that would definitely put a change on on you know put a change on you for sure and and the name of the brothel was Adelitas yep and so therefore you took the name I like that now yep. You tend to spell it in all caps. Is there a reason for that? Uh, that's just our logo. You know, a lot of people put an apostrophe before the S, but uh, that's just them not, not really, you know, sometimes sometimes people don't put time into uh, being prepared, uh, whether, the, whether you know, to know about the band, whether we're going to play a venue or whether we're, we're showing up at something. Sometimes I'll see an apostrophe there, and I'm like, dude, that's, you know, Look at our logo. There's no apostrophe. That's the only mistake I see people make all the time. But we put it in caps because that's our logo. You know, we, we've we, we branded ourselves a logo uh, during our second record during Homeschool Valedictorian, and it's just something we've uh, we've used. Yeah, well, that's a good idea because it would piss me off too if I showed up at a venue every time and my name is spelled wrong on the marquee with the yeah, apostrophe. Yeah, I've seen it spelled wrong a couple times, and, and uh, you know, it's it's a little offensive. But at the end of the day, I'm so easy going that I'm just like, you know, I'm I'm sure sometimes the person who did that is is someone that just doesn't have knowledge, and that's why that's why some people get further along in life than other people. People, some people are more thorough than other people. You know, we show up to clubs that have shown us total respect, man. You know, we get there and, and uh, you, you know, we're really taken care of. Everything's set up and it really feels like a, like we know the night's gonna be great. And those shows tend to be better. When you show up to a place where you roll in and there's no bathroom, no dressing room, your name's spelled wrong, they're not paying you shit. You know, you, you, you at the end of the day, it, it, it sometimes that reflects on the show, you know, it reflects on, on the place, you know, and you, you, you know, as a rock fan, it's already hard enough out there uh, on the road, you know, you're away from your family, you know, the genre is kind of in a struggling place. Um, it, it's good to show up and feel appreciated for your hard work. You know, we, we, we have such a punk rock mentality, though. We roll in anywhere and everywhere. Uh, you know, we've played on the floor early in our career, and, and we, we really don't. It's, it's really tough to rattle us, you know. The only thing that rattles us is when, you know, uh, we show up and, and, and another band is disrespecting us. You know, that's the only thing that really gets a rise out of me because I think if you're in another band and you understand what these bands go through, you know, what it takes to get to a show, what it, the sacrifice you make to go on tour, the sacrifices you make in your life to try to uh, attain this dream. If, if, if you know what these bands go through and you're out there treating your, your, your uh, you know, your equals and, or bands that are doing the same thing as you, like, like we've had that, man. We've, we've showed up and there have been bands who were just like slightly bigger than us and they've just really treated us absolutely like they were the red hot chili peppers and then we've actually played with the red hot chili peppers who were great to us <laughs> so yeah it's kind, of funny. <laughs> it's kind of funny the way it works it's always the bands who haven't quite achieved that level of success that that try to uh 
that, that try to really, uh, you know, treat other bands poorly. Yeah, and I mean, I've seen it, you know, myself, I've done a fair amount of touring as a roadie, um, you know, and dealing with some of these bands, same thing. They think they're like too big for this, too big for that. It's like, listen, I got news for you. You're not too big for anything right now, okay? No, I think, you know, for me, uh, you, you can never think you're too big for anything. You know, I don't go out there doing everything and anything. You know, I don't just say yes to every single thing. You know, I feel the vibe on it, man. I feel, you know, sometimes things have good energy on it, and sometimes things feel like it's a waste of your time. And, and if something feels like a waste of my time, uh, you know, I don't even I don't even pursue it. But if something feels like like you know, there's good there's good vibes, good intentions. I know that sounds crazy, but you can always just feel, you know, if there's support there, or if there's something, uh, you know, mutual that that like uh, it, almost an understanding of of just trying to change something for for the genre. I mean, you know, rock is so looked uh, down upon these days. It's crazy. It's like this younger generation of kids almost aren't even giving it a chance it's you know before you even make a record you have this notion uh of 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 you know the stigma on you almost and that, you know we've built what we've built because we surprise people man we show up and we play in clubs and we play all over the country and uh you know people who see our show are like damn i didn't a know this band had this many good songs and b i didn't know they were this good live so over the years of us just accomplishing that, now we've reached a point uh, where we're almost at the 10-year mark where we can show up to any single place in the United States and we play in front of a packed house of our loyal, amazing fans. And, and that's why, you know, I'm a very rebellious singer. I've pretty much given the music industry two, you know, two middle fingers. You know, we put this record out on our own label. I turned down every deal from every indie record company that came after us and people tried telling me that I was done oh you're going to turn us down you're yo, you know you're done and managers oh you're done and this and everything and, and honestly this year has been I would arguably say one of the most uh, successful years we've ever had as a band and you're talking about your most recent album Getaway correct yes well you know what you guys charted at number 8 so fuck them <laughs> exactly and, and that was just through hard work and, and relationships and a great song and um you know, sometimes sometimes the music speaks for itself. You know, it gets once you get into that zone where you're into the top ten, it, it gets really political. You know, we battle with uh, you know the corporations, the cumuluses, the clear channels. You know, they really weren't very supportive of us because we're taking such a rebellious stance uh, to to the, where the music industry is going. You know, I see where the music industry is heading, and and I and I think I'm just one of the first bands uh, to take a risk and take a chance. I think in a couple years, bands are going to be calling me asking me my approach and asking me how I did it because I see where the business is heading, man. I, I know exactly what's, you know, uh, what lies ahead for, for uh, all music and especially rock and roll. Yeah, the state of rock and roll is not good and sometimes it depresses me as well. But then, you know, I just keep, you know, I've been a rocker my whole life and then I just keep, you know, the thing with my show is I didn't want to do, we've been doing the show about four years now. And I didn't want to just do a classic rock show. I said, I always want to be progressing, finding new bands, which is how I stumbled across your band. And, you know, you're in rotation on our station. I play you on the show, you know, preach to people. You have got to check this band out. You know, you guys are looking for new bands, you know, and you're one of them. Um, I appreciate that. You know what's funny about uh, about this, the state of, of the human mind? It, you know, we've we put four albums out now. And it, we're still at the point where we're a new discovery. And I think when people go back and listen to our catalogs, honestly, you can listen to the greatest bands of all times, you know, Queen and, and Zeppelin and the Beatles. And there's going to be songs you love and songs you don't love, you know? And I think sometimes when, when, when a, a fan discovers us for the first time, you know, after we already have four albums out, it took that long for someone, you know, we never got that push when people go and listen to the four albums that we put out, uh, there are certainly some great songs in those four albums. And I think that that's how we also, you know, build what we've been able to build. I think, you know, once people go and listen to our entire catalog, you know, there's songs for everyone in there. There's, there's, uh, there's great songs all throughout that catalog. And I think the problem with rock music is it just, it just has such, uh, you know, it, it's like a, a, pre, a pre-notion. It's like if one of your friends dates a girl and he meets that girl's friend and he doesn't have a good impression of her off of one meeting uh you know he, he goes around and says oh that girl sucks you know and then 
you might meet that girl and be like, what is he talking about? This girl's great. You know, she's so cool. And, and, and I think rock has the notion of, oh, you know, you name any band in our genre and, and, and a kid on the outside who's listening to Imagine Dragons or, uh, you know, Taylor Swift immediately never even heard the songs. They say, oh, that band sucks. Right. And say, well, you're just saying that. Have you really listened to this band? I mean, there's tons of great bands in our genre. You know, uh, Pearl Jam just put out a great record. Obviously, they're a legacy act, but people aren't, weren't even given that record love. Soundgarden put out uh, King Animal, which was a great album, and it didn't get no love. Um, and then you have some of the newer bands uh, who were out there making some some, uh, some great noise. You know, uh, Nothing More put out a great record. And, you know, I just think people are really battling. It, it's almost cool to say Nickelback sucks. It's almost cool to say... Oh, uh, you know, this rock band suck. Breaking Benjamin, oh, they remind me of, you know, bass grade. You know, it's, it's, people aren't listening to the music at this point. They're just, they're prejudging, uh, they're prejudging before they even listen. It's pretty crazy, but I think at the end of the day, you gotta stop making, you know, we, we've already approached it where we stopped made, we haven't made records, uh, for anybody except ourselves and for anybody except you know, the fans who do want to hear uh, the kind of music we're making. Well, you know, and I've heard a lot of bands, musicians, songwriters say that as soon as you start writing for the people, it's a bad idea. You got to write for yourself first. Totally. And I think you also have to judge yourself. You can get lost in trying to prove people wrong too much and you make some crappy songs or you make some songs that are five minutes long. I think at the end of the day, you have to understand that the world we live in today, people want to hear hits. They want to hear, they want to playlist one or two songs off your album. Some people will go and spend the time with your full album, but that number of people is so small compared to the amount of people that are out there now that you, you have to just really, really work on songs and you have to make sure they're great. And that's all, that's all you can do at this point. And you have to go out there and present those songs at a live show and make sure they're great. And then you have to go out there and you have to interact with your fans who are there showing up to make memories. It's That's all about very memories. important, yeah, because that means a lot to people. Now, now speaking of that, you know, you talk about songs, and, you know, you guys, to me, are a very hard band, but I think you're also smart in songs like I Get Around and Bad Reputation that are radio-friendly singles that still rock. Like, I Get Around is such a catchy tune, you can't get it out of your head after you listen to it. Um, so I really think, you, you know, what you're saying is, is dead on, which leads me to the next thing, because, you know, my kids have called me and said, Dad, Dad, who is this? Who is this? This song's in a video game. Now, when I was researching you guys, a couple of things I didn't know is your first single, and correct me if I'm wrong on any of this stuff, your first single, Invincible, got featured in uh, SmackDown vs. Raw video game and also WWE superstars, and then they asked you to write a song for them as well? Yes. So now, let me just tell you, I'm sure you're aware of this, but your first single, Invincible, on YouTube, has 1,131,294 views. Now, I'm willing to bet you didn't sell that many records. Uh, no, not even close. Not okay. even close. And you know what? We're not even a big YouTube, you know, if you look at our YouTube numbers, we're not even a big YouTube band. I think uh, where we throw, you know, there's bands who've been discovered strictly off YouTube, and there's bands you go in their videos, and they got 10 million YouTube views. Like, you know, we never connected with the, the that audience, that world. YouTube never changed our career, never changed our life. First of all, YouTube is the shittiest company on the face of the earth. Well, that's what I wanted to get into with you because I'm sure you know that the powers that be are after them to start paying up as far as royalties go, and that's why I bring it up. You have another video on there, um, Sick? Sick is that has the... almost four million. Yeah. I mean, you, you, YouTube are crooks. Right. Uh, they're, the biggest, they're the biggest crooks in the game. If I were to ask anybody to li I'd rather people not even listen to our music than listen to it on YouTube. You know, I, people, I, I don't... You know, I have a t there's a tier. You know, the best place to support bands is by going to a live show and buying a CD live. Absolutely. Then the next best way it's to go either on iTunes or go to the store and buy the record. Right. Then the next way is I've embraced streaming. If someone wants to listen to us on Apple Music, on Google Play, on Amazon, on Spotify, I mean, yes, Spotify pays the least of those services, but it's still something to the artist. 
YouTube is literally worthless for the artist. You could tell me, Rick, oh, you got 20 million views on YouTube, and I would say, I don't care. Yeah, and that's why I brought it up, because I said, you know, that's why I brought it up, because I said, holy fuck. Fuck! I said, look at all these views, and and again, it's in the news, you know, because royalties, the royalty structure has changed. I mean, our royalties have doubled. Uh, the beginning of 2016, our royalties have doubled, and and I got to tell you, I'll be honest with you, for what we pay, I don't even think we pay enough. But you know, if we had to pay any more, we'd be out of business. Um, no, because totally. Look, the problem is, you know, people have a lot of misconceptions. You know, Spotify is trying to pay something out. It's just the major labels have the artists tied up in really bad deals, and they're collecting all the money. The major labels took the advance. They're collecting all the money. They own half of Spotify. I mean, it's just a really, really crooked game. Yeah, it YouTube, really is. And this YouTube, YouTube has been used in the copyright laws to pay the artist nothing. YouTube is evil. Every artist I've ever met hates YouTube, unless you're one of those people that made an acoustic video on there and got discovered. You know, YouTube is good for discovery. I don't even care... Uh, I don't want people listening to our music on YouTube. I mean, I, I don't care what people listen to our music. I want everyone listening to our music, but those guys are crooks. They found loopholes. And I meet so many artists that can't pay their bills, that can't support their families, that have sleep, you know. There's artists that I know that have sold a million records that are sleeping on couches. And at the end of the day, that's not cool. No. That's not, that's not, there's nothing cool about that. There's nothing, oh, that's that's awesome, man. There's nothing awesome about people who work really hard and have nothing to show for it. I mean, there's nothing cool about that. At the end of the day, when I complain or when I go on rants, it's because I meet these people. I know these people. You know, I've invested in other things besides just music. I love making music. I create music because I love it. Um, you know, I've, I've made uh, some of my success off of real estate and off of taking the money that I mean, I signed a record deal in the old music days. If, you know, where you signed a record deal in 2007 and you got you know, half a million dollars, you know, it's not like that anymore. Nowadays, these labels are giving the bands nothing. They're taking all their rights. They're, and that's why I didn't sign a record deal. You know, I, we got offered a couple of record deals and I was like, who is, who is signing this? Who's saying yes to this deal? Not me. Right. So, you know, I, I own, I own our newest record. I put it out on, on my own label. Um, and, and we've really, really enjoyed, uh, we really enjoyed, you, you know, uh, you know, getting paid for once. Getaway does not have a bad song on it. It is a solid album. Now, that leads me to my next question. You actually put out um, an EP called Deserve This in 2015. Yep. Why did you do the EP? Why didn't you wait until you were ready to do Getaway? How did that whole thing come about? People want, people want music. People want music. They want it now. We were coming off our major label deal. Uh, we were off Virgin Records, and, and, and we were coming off of Stuck. We had songs that we loved, and we realized that we're living in a world where you have to release the music. You have to, If you write something, now is the time. Put it out. We have another, I mean, look, at the end of the day, I have songs already. I'm writing another record right now, and I'm not, I'm not going to diminish Getaway. I want Getaway to marinate. I want people to sit with it and live with it and, 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 and listen to it and fall in love with it, but... I'm already creating music to uh, to put more music out because you have to stay relevant. You have to stay right in the front. You have to make sure that you're making your best. I still want to make my masterpiece. People sure. always talk about Homeschool Valedictorian. That was your best record. Homeschool was your best record. But when my career is all said and done, that will not be the case. I will put a better record out than Homeschool. You know, I, I think it's, it. I do think it's good. And, and you know, it, it definitely rocks. And, you know, I watched, unfortunately, back to YouTube. I did watch the videos from that. And, you know, I do see that, you know, you definitely made a lot of ground, you know, with Homeschool. Um, but, you know, to me, you know, Stuck is a great album. Uh, you know, now back to the, the, let me ask you this, though. When you did Getaway, obviously you put the songs from the EP on Getaway. Yep. Do you think that that hurts the sell? You know, okay, I understand that you wanted to get Deserve This out so, you know, there'd be new music. But then when you put Getaway on, do you think that that hurt sales in the sense of people that already bought the EP and were saying, well, now I'm just going to cherry pick Getaway off of iTunes? No, because they were going to cherry pick anyway. They were going to cherry pick anyway, and and when we gave the when we when we put that EP out, you know, we 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 gave that EP away to a lot of people. You know, the people that bought that EP just were there to support us. So a lot of people got the deserve this EP for free. You know, uh, we we're more about uh, we didn't also feel like a lot of enough people heard 
the deserve this EP. You know, we kind of released it, uh, you know, so we were going through such a transition. We were changing labels, we were changing managers, we were figuring out what we wanted to do. We just, we put the deserve this EP out for the fans and because we had songs that we loved. Um, with that said, we evaluated the deserve this EP. We realized that a couple thousand people bought it and we were like, look, there's still uh, a massive audience of people who have not heard these songs yet. So we put them on the Getaway album, and it worked. Look, the Getaway album... Uh, it, it, it it's sold, solid. It, it, sold quad, it, it sold quadruple with the Deserve This EP. So it, Good. It, there are still people out there that are just discovering even the Deserve This EP songs. Right, you know? right. Yeah, you oh, guys are you, know you guys is? are hard, you're, man. You're, you're, you're from the 70s, and yes. sometimes <laughs> if, if, if you can hear the influences of the 70s, in this in this getaway album and some people were disappointed that we changed uh our overall sound for this record but you always want to try to grow and make new music i don't want to make the same record as the first two records you know i'm sure i'll put a record out that's very reminiscent of some of the things people love about those first two albums but if i've seen i've noticed that we've hit a different audience with our last two releases with stuck and with deserved it with the uh, getaway album we've reached out to almost um a little bit of an older audience. You know, I've noticed there are more uh, older couples coming to our concerts. There are also younger kids coming to our concerts with the I Get Around and the Bad Reputations. And, you know, th those kids seem to be cherry picking those songs. But I've noticed a lot more people will come up to me and say, oh, dude, uh, you know, Cream was my band and this was my band. I'm like, damn, so you're, you're from the 70s and you hear the influence on our new records and they're like oh yeah man the guitar tones and and the, and the approach you know like that goes over a lot of people's heads you know like if 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 someone was born in the 90s or born in the late 80s they don't love the getaway album as much as they love homeschool valedictorian or they love our, our self-titled but for someone who was born in the 60s or 70s or even 50s they listen to those records and they understand our influences on the record yeah, you know what? Now that you say it, maybe that's why I was hearing it that way. You know, because yeah. it just, you know, a lot of times I would put your stuff on just as I'm getting ready in the morning, and you know, you hear a song you didn't hear before, and you're like, yeah, this is it. Uh, another one of my favorites I love off of Getaway is "Sometimes You're Meant to Get Used." Love that. Oh yeah, yeah. What was the inspiration for that song? You know, um, I always hear people kind of you know, complain about, relate, you know, even my guy friends, girlfriends, you hear people talk, and, and in my life too, girls that I've done this to or with, or, you know, you hear, oh man, you know, uh, we went on a date and we hooked up and then she never called me again, or, or, you know, I went on a date with her and we hooked up and it was okay, I never called her again. And sometimes people look at that as a negative thing and it's like, no, dude, you know, sometimes that happens. Sometimes in life, everything doesn't work out. Sometimes you're meant to, you're meant to get used. Now, you were talking about guitar players before. Now, you've had a, a few lineup changes in this band, most notably the guitar players. Why is that? For two reasons. I'll okay. Two reasons. Reason number one: the music business has changed so much that sometimes guys come in with the most unrealistic attitudes about it. You know, they'll be like, "Wait a minute, we're not in, we're not staying at the Four Seasons, and we're not in a bus, and we're not." We're not doing this, that, and the other thing. We actually have to work hard. And, you know, like the music business doesn't have the rewards it used to. You know, when we first started this band in 2007, 2008, like, you know, people would come in and they would, they had, their expectations were unrealistic. They're like, wait a minute, we're not on a bus right away. And I'm not making, I'm not making, you know, five grand a week. And it's like, no one wants to play a club in front of 13 people. But when no one knows who your band is, reason number two, reason number two, and I've had this happen with every guitar player that I've ever come across. Look, I started Adelita's Way. I write every single song. Sometimes I write the songs with the band. Sometimes I write songs by myself. All of our biggest hits, I wrote. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. When you, when the guitar players come in and they try to Game of Thrones me, they try to take me out, they try to, they try to come into my band, which I've started in 2005 by myself, um, and they try to get me, they try to like almost, Kick me out of my own band. And you're hitting the road in a couple of weeks again, right? Yeah, we're going out with Buck Cherry. We're going to do all the Are you Buck kidding Cherry. me? I did not hard. realize. I looked at your tour dates, but I did not know you were going out with Buck Cherry, and I 
fucking love Buck Cherry. I go see Those them great, all you the know, time. They, they, they've, always, they've been great to us our whole career, you know. Before, it's funny, before I went on this journey, I called Keith, who kind of does a lot of the stuff with Buck Cherry, and I picked his brain a little bit about, you know, because... Uh, you see a lot of bands come up major labels, they feel nervous, they sign with E1, they sign with Razor and Tie, they sign to an indie label because they feel like they have to. They feel like if they don't sign this bad deal, they're gonna go away. Um, you know, that was never an option for me. For me, I wanted to learn more about doing this a different way. I wanted to learn more about being innovative and doing something that's gonna be the future. So I called Keith from Buck Cherry, he was great. He talked to me for a couple hours, gave me lots of advice, and we went for it, man. And look, here we are. So now you're hitting the road with Buck Cherry. How long are you going to be out with them? We're going to be out with Buck Cherry for four weeks. Okay. Uh, any chance you guys are going to get to the New York area? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's where the tour starts. Really? Yeah. I did not see that. I'm going to have to. Uh, I'm going to have to check into that. Okay. Any idea let me where? See, let me see where this starts. Uh, we play New Hampshire, Jordan, New York, Stafford Springs, Connecticut. Um, oh, I saw a New York. I saw a New York date, but it's far from the city. Is is what I'm thinking? Yeah, uh, you know, I, the, the schedule's still coming together too because I, the tour starts in the East Coast on like the eighth, and I don't have the dates for the eighth yet. I, our first show, I have a Buck Cherries on the eleventh, so I'm still waiting for a couple of those shows to pop in. Okay, great. Well, I definitely hope you guys make it to the New York, New Jersey area because I will be there. I will definitely be there because I go see Buck Cherry every time they come to New York. Um, I believe you guys played in Stanhope, New Jersey a few months back. Oh, uh, yeah. That was a great show. Yeah, and I was, you know, I live in New York, and I, I had it in my calendar. I said, I really want to go see these guys. I really, And I just could not make it. And it, and it killed me because I said, man, that's their only date in the area. God damn it, you know. And that's why when I was looking at the tour dates, I said, well, they were just here. Maybe that's why they're not coming back to the, you know, immediate New York area too soon. But yeah, hopefully. We try to not do that. My goal is to come to a place once, maybe twice in an entire year or two. We try to, we will not be back to Stanhope or none of those places unless we're supporting a band that's like Buck Cherry that's already going there. Mm -hmm. We will not be head, we will not headline anywhere twice in a year. You know, we got, we got to let it breathe. We want people to understand when we come back, it's a big deal. You got to see us. Yeah, it's a smart move. That's a smart move. Well, congratulations on the uh, Buck Cherry tour because that's a hot show. Buck Cherry out of Lead Way, I would be there in a heartbeat for that. Absolutely. I'm very excited about it. Well, good. I want to wish you good luck on the road. Um, you said you're going out for four weeks with them, and then do you go out after that on your own? No, we're going to do another tour that I haven't announced yet. I can't announce it yet, but okay. we're going to go out again in august and and it's just you know again it's another testament to all our hard work you know we're we're on our own label we're do, we got no management no nothing and we're still getting calls from the top bands you know we're still right in the mix we, we, we hit number eight on the charts and at rock radio we're still right in the uh, thick of things and we're doing it all ourselves it feels great you know i gotta tell you rick i really like your attitude i really like the way you're doing things and it's like you said at the beginning of this conversation bands are calling you for advice and I really think you're doing the right thing because the status quo obviously is not working anymore. So, no, you know, I, I by... Appreciate it. Change, change is coming. Change is coming and we're trying to be the leaders of that. Well, it sounds to me like you're doing the right thing because somebody's got to do something. I mean, there's plenty of, you know, plenty of people that love rock and roll, plenty of people that want to hear it. And, you know, a lot of my friends got their teenage kids playing classic rock, and I firmly believe that that's going to be the next wave. It might take us eh, seven, ten years, but I keep telling everybody, I said, look, I can't tell you how many of my friends got their kids playing. I've seen videos of these kids, or I've been to the houses in the garages watching, and these kids are into it. They got it. So, you know, I'm saying, look, you know what? I think that's our next wave right there, and I hope it yeah, is. Look, dude, right now we're doing a little bit of weeding out of the weeks and the fakes, the people that really don't love rock, the people that really don't love it, you know, and I'm going to let that happen, and when, it all, when the dust clears, we're going to be making great records. That you will. Rick, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk to us. Again, I am a big fan of the band, and I said, you know, I really want to talk to, I really want to talk to these guys. So thanks so much for doing the show, man. Oh, no problem. I had a great time. All right. Rick to Jesus, everyone, from Adelitas Way. As I tell you on the show all the time, get on this band. 
buy Thank everything. You, go check the new record out on iTunes, on Spotify, Apple Music. Download it on your playlist. Listen to it. Give us a listen. And it's a cool cover. I like that chick. She does it for me. I don't know why. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, because it's a cartoon sort of thing, you know, it's a, or however you put it. But, oh, yeah, uh, that's Adelita, man. That's Adelita. Uh, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, see, it's the, so you based the cover on the Adelita from Mexico. Yep. Is it? yep. Interesting. See all the crap yep. you learn when you talk to somebody. That yeah. is so interesting. Now, have you ever had contact with her again? Nope. Wow. One time thing. So she's out there somewhere, and she has no idea the inspiration that she gave you. Exactly. Wow. Beautiful thing. All right, Rick, thank you so much, man. Uh, we will stay in touch, definitely. And when you hit this area, man, I will, I will definitely be there. I can't wait to see the band live. I'll see you soon. I can't wait. All right, good luck out there with Buck Cherry. Uh, keep rocking it. Keep doing what you're doing. You, you, you inspired me. I feel great, man. This was Thanks. really good to talk to somebody that's got a solid vision, that's like, fuck the man, and I'm going to keep rocking in spite of everything that happens. Yep, that's all you could do. Well, it's more than that's all you could do. You're doing a lot, man. You really are. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Rick, thank you very much, man. We'll talk to you soon. I'll see you, my friend. Thanks. All right, bye.